I have Asperger's syndrome. In this film, I'll explain how this condition affects my work as a writer and a filmmaker, and how it impacts on those around me. Asperger's syndrome is an autistic disorder that affects around half of 1% of the population. It is twice as prevalent in men than in women. The condition was first identified in children in the 1940s by the Austrian paediatrician Dr. Hans Asperger. Since my recent diagnosis, I have a much better understanding of why my life has been characterised by feelings of social isolation and I now understand why other people find me a little odd, and occasionally rude. It was at the Cairn Hotel when uh, I walked into the gents' toilet during one of the intervals in the film festival programme, and he was in there and I just said, Oh, uh, so you're James Jammers then? And slightly strangely said, And who might you be? And I said, Oh, uh, I'm Ken Wilson, I write for the... Film and Video Maker magazine, which I presumed he knew that. I didn't know why it said what he said. Uh, I didn't say another word. He went to the wash basin and washed his hands and dried his hands and went out into the corridor. I thought, oh, perhaps he feels uncomfortable talking in the gent's toilet, as some people do, and perhaps he's waiting outside. But when I got out, he wasn't there and never came near me, never spoke to me the rest of the week. And so my overriding thought was, have I said something or done something? Has he formed an opinion about me that he doesn't like? He doesn't like my articles or he didn't like my comments about one of his films? Uh, has he been offended by something I've said, which was never intentional? Um, and I was uh, puzzled. At the time of this incident, I didn't know I had Asperger's syndrome. I've now been able to explain to Ken the reason for my puzzling behaviour and offer my belated apologies. I'll now introduce you to Sue Bence. She's got to know me better than most. In fact, it was her knowledge of autistic behaviour that was to lead to my formal diagnosis. This is James and I being presented with an award for our film Hooton Park. Looking at James in this kind of situation, it's not obvious that he's quite different to me and most other people. I first got to know James a couple of years after he'd taken voluntary redundancy from a management job with BT. He told me he worked for BT for 26 years and hated every single day of it. Why didn't he leave and find another job? It was a well-paid job and he had a family to support and a mortgage to pay. James wrote a stage musical called Dream Beat, a 1960s rock opera, and my daughter was part of the dance team. When she came home from a rehearsal, she'd have been given pages of copious notes. James was obviously highly motivated and organised, but lacked the ability to give out only the information that mattered to the recipients. I'd find a collection of notes at the bottom of her bag a week or so later, unread. I wrote the script and the song lyrics for this stage musical. The music was written by Dave Kent, a prominent musician from the 1960s Merseybeat era. Although our partnership was highly productive from a creative point of view, at a personal level, I found the relationship awkward, and it was never going to develop into a friendship. I didn't really know James at this time, and Dave Kent was just a name on the programme. It doesn't surprise me that their creative partnership didn't last beyond Dreambeat. Their work was completed, and typical of a person with Asperger's syndrome, James simply moved on to the next project. Losing his creative partner didn't deter James from throwing himself headlong into writing another stage musical called The Magic Opera. He wrote all the lyrics and the music, then paid a music arranger to produce the backing tracks.
Following on from this, he was taken in by some fine words from an alleged filmmaker. This is a very typical scenario for those with Asperger's syndrome, taking things at face value. And in the case of the proposed film, it was a lot of hot air. After James was awarded a lottery grant to fund a film project based on the stage play, the so-called filmmaker called the project off and ran off with all of DV tapes and other items. James bought his own camera and took up filmmaking. And it was at this point his natural failing to recognise how he caused others discomfort became apparent. Although at the time I didn't recognise this was because he had Asperger's syndrome. James built a series of sets in my garage. I had a very stressful full-time job and I'd come home late to find him pacing the floor on the set he'd built during the day, anxiously wanting to get started. But he couldn't start without me. He drove me in as a director. I often went without a meal, because James is incredibly impatient in this kind of situation. When I look back at the songs I wrote for the Magic Opera, I can clearly see how the lyrics reflect my own feelings of isolation and the fear of being trapped in unfamiliar situations. Lost and alone Thinking that I'm crazy After I'd finished shooting this film, I took the cast and crew out for a meal. My way of thanking them for their commitment to the project. However, I don't enjoy social situations like this, and I'll leave conversation to everyone else, unless someone wants to talk about technical stuff like cameras or microphones. James isn't good at making eye contact a very irritating trait that's typical of someone with his condition. I've never really got used to this, and others must find it disconcerting too. What is even more disconcerting is when he unexpectedly subjects his listener to an intensely discomforting stare. James does understand human emotion, but this is from an outsider's point of view. He's more than capable of writing about it, his published one-act plays are full of human emotion and have been performed all over the world. James goes into extraordinary detail when he's researching a subject for a film. He takes great delight in discovering the most obscure bits of information. I think Sue is talking about things like this, where I point out that the border between Wales and England is visible as a change in the road surface. Sadly, however, the majority don't share James's obsessive kind of interest in such matters. I'm often in the difficult position of trying to persuade him to make cuts to parts of a film he's put his heart and soul into creating. I'm attracted to much more than mere obscure detail. While most people's attention, for example, will be drawn to the historic architecture of a city like Chester, my eyes will find the ugliness that lurks around every corner. I see poetry in decay and loss, and in stories of unfulfilled dreams. But I struggle to understand why no one else appreciates what I have revealed. This adds to my feelings of being an outsider, something I can't change, 
no matter how hard I try. James is a master of routine, one of the most significant characteristics of someone with Asperger's syndrome, and he finds it difficult dealing with actors who can't be relied on to turn up at rehearsals or are casual about learning their lines. He's also obsessed with time. He's never late. If he's picking me up at 10.30, then I know to be ready for 10.25. There isn't a room in my house that hasn't got at least one clock on the wall. There's even one in the summer house. It's almost impossible for the rest of us to appreciate how the mind of someone with Asperger syndrome can be so dominated by structure. This can be found in almost every part of James's way of life, right down to the unimportant. This need for rigid structure no doubt enabled him to write the script of Prelude to Macbeth in perfect Shakespearean blank verse, which has a fixed structure that he could control. While all the pleasant summer months would be lost on the battlefield of Duncan's behest. Uh, would exile be worse or better than this? Would Duncan come after me to England? Seek me out! The cutaway of soldiers in pursuit of Macbeth was filmed on a hill in Lancashire with a group of Viking reenactors. James's apparent indifference towards those who were helping him achieve his objectives was much in evidence. What you can't see is that it's very wet and cold, and these were just ordinary guys with a passion for dressing up, not paid film extras. So I had to carefully couch James's barked orders in terms of polite requests. Return and explain. I have a need to know how from the gutter it is possible to touch Scotland's crown. When filming the exterior scenes for Prelude to Macbeth in a local woodland, James planned a whole day's shooting. His planning is frighteningly precise, but he always tries to include too much never allowing for things like comfort breaks. Actors not knowing their lines gets James extremely agitated. He failed to see the funny side of the dog walkers getting into the picture. Those with Asperger's syndrome don't have a sense of humour like the rest of us. James has a very tolerant wife. I'll never know how she put up with her lounge being taken over for more than two weeks with a set for the highly imaginative film, The Other World of Meredith. Furniture was rearranged and the room filled with what I can only describe as junk. This was the place of lost things, a kind of Bermuda Triangle where everything that disappears without trace, including people, ends up. This film was overly ambitious, and it didn't achieve its full potential. There's a limit to what James can achieve on his own without a technical support crew for sound and lighting. I doubt if he could work with a team anyway, given his condition. What are you doing? Mum? I have a job for you. These are the opening shots in our documentary about sea shanties. James created the below deck setting in his summer house. He also made the costume for the sailor. James is a very contented individual when he works alone, building sets or making costumes. On the morning tide, heading home to Liverpool. Most of the men the sailor will be going. James back. always means well. He's a loyal friend and a generous person. The sea chest was built out of an old TV cabinet of mine. When the filming had finished, he gave me back the seat chest for my garden book shed. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is done and the winds don't blow. And it's time for us to leave her. I will always endeavour to be precise in what I say. And I never make statements unless I'm sure of the facts. 
but this doesn't appear to be the case with many of the people I come into contact with. I shot this music video on the deck of a vintage sailing ship berthed in Liverpool and not in a studio using a green screen to create a backdrop. And these are real ships on a real sea and not created on a computer. So I was very annoyed and upset by comments made on more than one occasion by critics of my work that I use green screen and CGI. This surely is a metaphor for the gulf between those who have Asperger syndrome and the majority who don't. That the majority expects everyone to behave in the same way as they do. I often find myself in some very unusual situations when we're out filming. Like the trip on a small boat up the canal behind the massive ICI factory at Runcorn. This trip was most memorable because it sparked a security alert. The police helicopter took to the air to see what we were doing. It was a scary experience and I thought we all might be arrested. Was James at all bothered? Of course not. This trip was also a reminder that James is oblivious to the need to make polite conversation with those who are helping him achieve his aims and thank them for their assistance. So I have to step into this role. He's always quite shocked by his own behaviour when it's pointed out to him after the event. Having Asperger's syndrome does have one significant advantage for James as a filmmaker. He is totally focused on the task in hand and nothing distracts him. When we were filming the magic opera on the streets of Chester, the music was blaring out of a portable speaker for the actors to lip sync to. A large crowd had gathered and a group of Japanese tourists were filming us as we filmed. There was also the threat of being chased by the authorities. James had written for permission, but had never received a reply. I wish I knew. Who are these people that are here? Who are these people all around me? No one here that I know. If I had to sum up what it's like to have Asperger's syndrome in just a few words, then I'd say the condition is dominated by the feeling of being on the outside, looking in on a world I can never be part of. And therefore the world that you inhabit appears to me to be little different to a scene like this. What is this place you've come to? Nothing here that you know. Am I dreaming? I wish I knew. 